I am Ben Simmons, and this is my wild, non-traditional story about getting into and through medical school. Unfortunately for me, it's not the perfect story about doing everything right in high school and college and having the dream medical school experience, but also it's not the story about someone who's had to sleep in a van and work two jobs to pay for school. It's more of some right choices, some wrong choices, doing some things right along the way, having some unfortunate things happen to me along the way. It's the general human experience, I would say. It's something about, it's a story about growth and maturity, something that we can all kind of relate to. Why did I want to become a doctor? There's two distinct memories I have of my childhood that really kind of influenced my decision to want to be a doctor. The first was growing up in Queens, New York, one of the most diverse populations in the country, if not the world, and just seeing how the physician workforce didn't really represent the diversity of the population. And I always wondered if I could be a part of that difference. The second thing is going to an annual physical. I was about nine or 10 years old, went to see my doctor, super excited about just starting a new basketball league. And I enthusiastically asked, how tall am I gonna be? I need to be one of the taller kids to be better in basketball. And he went through the growth chart and he said, looks like you'll be just about six foot three. And I was so excited, I had the biggest smile on my face. I wanted whatever superpower he had that he can estimate or guess what my height was gonna be. And I was like, whatever training you did is something that I wanna go through. I wanna be able to have that same superpower. Um, and he actually ended up turning out to be right. I ended up being 6'3", so uh, full circle it all. It all worked out. <laughs> Throughout high school, I always had the idea in the back of my mind that I wanted to become a doctor. But I didn't necessarily have the maturity that it took to make sure that everything was in place to head in that direction. Instead, I was enjoying a lot of social activities. I felt like I was doing better than my peers academically, even though I wasn't studying that much. So I felt like I had a good handle on things, even though in reality, I didn't. I was fortunate to get accepted into the Civicus Community Service Based Honors Program at the University of Maryland College Park. When I got to the University of Maryland, it was like a dream come true. The typical TV college experience coming from a big urban center to this suburban college campus with the giant mall, giant library, fraternity row, sorority row, everything that you've ever seen on TV, the stereotypes of what a big state party school would look like uh, and kind of got carried away in that and let the academic priorities slip a little bit um, to the point where I wasn't exactly in line with all of the other pre-med students, although I knew that I was still considering myself to be pre-med, um, I wasn't taking every avenue available to put myself in the best position to make that happen. And it wasn't really till about my senior year where I really had the maturity to buckle down and kind of realize it's time to get this thing moving. I went into the pre-health office and had a rude awakening when talking to the pre-health advisor and she bluntly told me that it was pretty rude for me to show up my senior year to a pre-health meeting, being that these pre-med students have been meeting up quarterly, semesterly, making sure that everything is in place for them to be in the best position to get into medical school. Um, and she suggested that I go across the streets of the career center and find something else to do that was not medicine. So of course I was a little discouraged, um, but at this time I was nearing graduation and I needed to get a job. I knew I was gonna have to start paying bills, pay back these student loans, different things of that nature. So luckily I went across the street and the U US Department of Treasury, they had a representative there that was hiring for a IT position for someone to help them switch over from Blackberry to iPhone. So I'm kind of aging myself a little bit at that point. Um, but I got on, I got on the team there working a lot with encrypting Blackberries and iPhones and helping the business teams kind of switch over data, secure their devices and different things like that. Um, and then I did that for a little over a year, maybe two years and decided that I can't be sitting at a desk just watching the clock go by until it's time to clock out. Even if I've done everything I'm supposed to do for the day by 2 p.m., I still have to sit there until five. And that feeling just didn't sit right with me. So I said, it's time to go back to those thoughts I had about being a doctor and see exactly what I would need to do to make that happen. First thing I did, I went to Google. I started searching in like how to become a doctor. What are my different options? Caribbean med school options. Not really sure too much what was going on, um, but, but knowing or thinking that I can figure it out on my own. And as I was Googling, I received an email from a school in the Caribbean that offered me an opportunity to join their class and I wouldn't even have to take the MCAT. 
I would just have to take their version of the MCAT, which is their entrance examination, and I could matriculate in as little as six to eight weeks. And I thought, you know, this is the perfect opportunity, even though I had friends warning me that it may be too good to be true. In my mind, I said, you know what, there's people graduating from here. They showed me a list of people that had gotten residency, so I felt confident. And little do you know, I took the entrance exam and about two months later, I was headed to St. Lucia. Now, mind you, there are a lot of good, respectable Caribbean medical schools. And even this medical school that I attended did have people who graduated and went on to achieve residency, some friends that I still have to this day. Uh, however, when I got there, I was there for about four to six months and then started asking around, you know, like, where are people getting residencies? What are they getting their residencies in? As I was learning more, I knew what questions to ask. And I, they got the idea that I wanted to be at a larger university academic center. And one of the deans of student affairs kind of suggested to me that this may not be the best place to put me in, uh, to put me in the right channels to get into a big academic center. Um, and suggested that maybe I go back to the States and start uh, looking at post-bac routes or different routes to get into a uh, United States medical school. During my time in St. Lucia, I learned so much about how to become a better student, learned about study skills, time management, really refined myself overall as a student, as a learner, a clinician, and decided that, you know what, all I need now is an opportunity to prove myself back in the United States and get into one of these big academic centers that I was hoping to be a part of. Um, and so I went back from St. Lucia back to DC, I actually ended up getting a job working at Apple, doing something very similar I was doing at the Treasury, working with these different business teams, transferring information over to their iPhones, also encrypting iPhones. And that was an amazing opportunity. Of course, Apple pays well at a time when I need to uh, be studying and doing other ventures. So that was a great opportunity for me. I knew I was gonna need a strong MCAT score to overcome my undergraduate GPA in addition to retaking some of my undergrad classes and taking some upper level science classes to just show that I could really hang um, in the difficult academic rigors of medical school and post-baccalaureate programs. So I took two months off of work to study for the MCAT full-time, ended up doing well on that. I believe it was a 32 on the old MCAT scale and after that, went back and got A pluses in all the classes that I did worse than Bs on in undergrad and then took some upper level biochem and chemistry and biology classes, made sure I got A pluses in all of those. So at least I had a solid amount of credits of 4.0 um, to help me apply to post or medical schools along with a strong MCAT score to try and somewhat make up for a weak undergrad performance. And so from there, I said, okay, let me look for programs in which all I need is an opportunity to prove myself, and then I can get into the med school. And so these were some of these post back programs that had guaranteed admission if you did above a certain GPA. And included in those was the GEMS program at Georgetown, the MedPath program at Ohio State, the Drexel uh, program that's pretty popular as well. And there were a few others that I decided to apply to. I can put a list of those in the comments as well, so you can kind of get an idea of what those programs are. But um, ended up getting into the Georgetown GEMS program was a blessing to be accepted there and finally have an opportunity to prove myself after all the maturity I'd gone through. And I said, you know, I'm finally ready to do this. I can hang with the best of them. I proved that I can score well and whether it be on a standardized test or in difficult coursework and ended up doing well in my GEMS year and getting accepted into Georgetown as a first year medical student. Now, this is where things started to take an awkward turn for me. I truly thought going to a school in the Caribbean and refining my study skills, becoming a better clinical thinker, becoming a better student would make me a stronger applicant for med school. But little did I know there was actually some logistical obstacles in the way when you, uh, when you leave one medical school and try and apply to a new one. This actually caused me to have trouble getting some FAFSA loans at some point, and I actually needed to take time off from medical school. I was lucky to be already in a summer program at the Mayo Clinic after my first year of medical school, doing clinical research in cardiology and cardiac rehab, which I'll talk about in a different video. But while I was out there, I had to humble myself and let them know that, look, I may not be able to go back to medical school when the summer's over, is there any, you know, but I'd love to help out in any way I can here. And luckily they said, you know, we'd love to have you here in whatever capacity that is for however long that is. 
ended up staying there and doing some clinical research work, getting a few publications done, and ended up being a wonderful experience. Upon my return to medical school, I realized that there were some rumors circulating about why I had taken time off. People had all kinds of crazy stories. Maybe I committed a crime or was doing something really bad. Um, and it was hard for me to kind of overcome that mental block and thinking that people felt a kind of way about me. Um, so I was just putting one foot in front of the other, making sure I had to do what I had to do to get my work done, uh, to do well in my coursework, but not really loving everything that was going on because of the atmosphere that was around me. Um, after that second year was over, went into third year of medical school, which is where everything switches over from the classroom to actual clinical work in the hospital and worked with an internal medicine doctor who I really had a good relationship with. He ended up giving me one of my recommendations for residency, but in short, he said, you know, I really don't know how to give recommendations for med students. I just know that some of them get it and some of them don't as far as how to be a clinician and how to operate with patients. And he says, and you get it and you're gonna be great. Everything's gonna work out for you. And after that, I really had a renewed love for medicine. I just loved how the pace of medicine went, how you never feel like you're just waiting in an office in a cubicle for five o'clock to come. Uh, every, you know, time flies by, you get to enjoy talking to people, you get to think scientifically, work through things, have intellectual conversations, and just really began to love it. The rest of my third and fourth year went by wonderfully. I didn't really have any big hiccups um, until fourth year came. Um, I went to do some away rotations those were actually amazing. I went to the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, went to Northwestern in Chicago, came back to Georgetown, did the rest of my fourth year clinical rotations, was actually in the middle of my cardiology rotation, which is one of my big interests for career path. And that is when the coronavirus all came down on the United States. And unfortunately, we actually had to remove ourselves from the clinical rotations due to the coronavirus and found out that we were no longer going to be able to have a match day for residency. We we're no longer going to be able to have a graduation. And this actually coronavirus experience probably deserves its own video as well. So I won't get too much into the details. Ended up matching at Rutgers University in Newark, New Jersey, which is actually not too far from my hometown of Queens, New York. So I was excited to get back to the tri-state area, kind of get back to those underserved communities, those diverse communities that need a physician workforce that looks more like them. Um, so I was definitely excited about that and not and to be not too far from my big social network here in DC where I've been for the last 10, 12 years. Um, so that's my kind of wild story. A lot of ups and downs there. Definitely feel free to hit me up on Instagram at Ben Simmons MD with any questions you have. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to listen to my story. Please like, comment, and be sure to subscribe to learn more about my journey and follow me through residency in the midst of this coronavirus pandemic. Have a wonderful day.